right, all right, all right. Good morning out there. Hope you're doing well. Welcome into another edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mack, not on 1010XL's podcast platform this morning. Of course, on Facebook and all over podcast land and social media land. But here in my home, I don't know, this is like a studio office Etc. I do a lot of my work from this room. It's kind of a sunroom. You can see the sun shining coming in. I brought two friends of mine. Remember that guy? That used to be on a billboard back when I was lean and mean. <laughs> Fight machine. And uh, that was, uh, let's see, one of those games is up in Nashville when we had to play the Oilers uh, up at uh, University of Vanderbilt. And then the other one is against the Cowboys in the final preseason game in 19. 99. So a lot going on, of course, free agency in full swing. We're going to get into that. My show brought to you by Team Tommy Mac. Great, great businesses that I... Wait, when you're in need of those kind of services and they all get exclusivity, please check them out when you get the chance. They're all over social media. With me uh, today, of course, kicking off the Players Championship in Ponte Vida Beach. Many, many a story down there. Um... I raced the boat once, the pontoon boat, yeah, in a uh, in a drunken stupor. Me and Michael Cheever, he challenged me because the line was so long, and uh, getting we, that's when we would take the pontoon from the back of the Marriott to I think the twelfth tee box or is that thirteen? I think it's twelve. And on the way back, he challenged me to race the boat back, and I did. I jumped in the water and swam. And beat the boat. <laughs> I did. I beat the boat. Little did I know my future father-in-law was actually in the line. Did not know him at the time, but uh, great memories. And of course, if you've never heard the John Daly story, we'll get into it. But John and I and his friends and some of my friends, including teammates, had a great night. Thursday night. What was that? 1998. And uh, wake up Friday morning hearing that John Daly has withdrawn from the tournament and the cops came to his room or something, like ruined the room, and he had my jersey on. It's a long story. Anyway, I hauled ass to go see Coffin, go sit in front of him because I was always taught get to the coach first, and he'd already heard about it. <laughs> and he literally looked at me. He's like, how the hell did he get in, into these things? I'm like, coach, I, I wasn't doing nothing. And he came up to me. He wanted to hang out. You know, we started getting along, having some drinks, and next thing you know, he's, he's you know, losing his mind. It's I had nothing to do with it. Anyway, he, uh, he always would shake his head. At that, a lot of you are shaking your head this morning. I understand. And yesterday, uh, as we des desperately uh, awaited whether Calvin Ridley was going to continue a Jaguar career, um, I was shocked as just about anybody that Tennessee came in with that number, a massive number uh, for Calvin Ridley. I know a lot of people out there are very upset and very upset that they couldn't tag Calvin. Look, I, too, wanted them to get a deal done with Josh Allen, and I, too, wanted them to tag Ridley and see if he could do it for another year. Now, that didn't happen. It is what it is. We'll get into all the, the new Jaguars, which I'm excited about. I think, you know, I like this class so far. Yeah, Ridley would have been great. I wouldn't have paid him that money. I, I wouldn't have. And, and you guys can all, you know, it's funny. We can all play Gia, but we're not in the room. None of us are in the room. You know, even if you've got a, a, a source, I highly doubt it's the GM. I highly doubt it's someone, you know, that uh, is negotiating in those uh, in those meetings. I, you, may, you may know somebody that's, you know, outside the meetings and they're here and stuff and they're telling whatever. I don't really care. All I'm saying is most of us, if not all of us, are not in the room when these negotiations happen. So, you know, people are like, well, you should have paid Josh earlier. Well, when? When would you have paid Josh? You know, after last year, not last year, the year before, would you have? I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have given him anywhere near a monster contract. He wasn't one of the top outside backers in the game. He was okay. He disappeared a lot. Now, 2023, he had a massive year. You should have gone to him earlier. I get that. And you know what? Don't believe everything you hear at press conference. Trent should never have said that. And I'm not trying to defend Trent. It is what it is. If they don't win this year, I don't care if they get rid of everybody. Okay? I don't. I, I mean, not everybody, but... I'm, it's over. You know, that's three years, uh, four, three to four years, whatever. I'm just, mm, if they don't get it done this year, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Even Doug, too. I mean, it's it's go time, man. This is a big year for Trent, for Doug. Uh, I'm willing to let it play out and see what happens. Uh, there's still more free agency to go. 
Uh, the draft is upcoming on the draft. The last couple of years hasn't been that great. Uh, incomplete grade on last year, but really Anton and, and Antonio Johnson. Uh, you know, Parker's okay. We'll see if they even stick him around. Um, but, you know, look, I'll, I'll wait to see how it happens. I'm not happy that Ridley left. I'm, I'm not. And I do think it's a waste of time that you went and draft or not draft, traded for him uh, only to let him resurrect his career here in uh, Jacksonville to go on. No, I, I don't blame Calvin for taking the bag. I mean, that's a lot of fucking money. Excuse my language. That's a lot of money. 50 million bucks guaranteed. I'm out of here. I'm sorry, Jag fans. If I'm him, I'm out of here too. You got to take the money while you can. Whether you believe he deserves it or not, whether you believe that we pay him now, which I, don't, I wouldn't have either. I wouldn't have paid him that money. I'd, I'd, I'd be afraid that that big money might not uh, you know, keep him hungry. I think another year would have. And I'll tell you this, he won't be as effective. He, he won't. Uh, he would have been very effective with Gabe Davis on the other side, Christian Kirk in the slot, and, and Ingram as your tight end. Of course, Etienne Jr. coming on the backfield. But um, he would have thrived, I think, in another year under Doug, uh, with a QB that's still learning the game, that's still growing, that's still trying to get better, who had some great things go on and not so great. We don't have to get into that. But I don't think, look, Will Levis, yeah, whatever, he's got a big arm. So what? You know, we got seven deep every single time. Uh, that'll get old after a while. I just don't think he will be as effective. But he gets his money and, he'll, you know, that's generational wealth. I don't know. That's <laughs> a lot. I just, you know, it's funny because I know, when I was playing, like my my biggest salary was six hundred k. My last year, like base salary was six hundred thousand dollars, and and then you know I didn't think it was that much money because uh, I see other guys and whatnot just being involved in that whole thing. And then you know you look at today, like six hundred k a year in the real world. Oh my gosh, that would be unbelievable. Three hundred would be a great great living, especially here in Jacksonville. But uh, fifty mil. What do you do? I'm, I'm going to. I am. Now, if, if they got close, which I wouldn't have, again, I'm not paying him Mike Evans money. He's not Mike Evans. He hasn't proven that. He's had a good year. A uh, lot of miscues, you know, drops. But coming off a year and a half, uh, you know, uh, uh, layoff or whatever you want to call it, yeah, I'll take the eight touchdowns and the 1,000 yards. I wanted to see more. Didn't happen. Um, and again, you know, and back to Josh that I made a comment on, 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 on Twitter. You know, like, you're not in the room. I don't know. Okay, go to him early. Okay, go to him when he has 13 sacks. Hey, Josh, we want to we wanna re-up your deal. Okay, I want the top. Well, we don't think you're worth the top. Well, I want the top. I mean, I'm, I don't even know. Maybe he did it. I, I have no idea. I know what I'm asking for if I'm in. I'm asking for Brian Burns' money, if not a little bit more. Which is wild because it's better than or close to what Chris Jones got on like a you know guaranteed basis. And I'm like, wow, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. Because I wouldn't pay Josh Allen Chris Jones money, but I sure as hell would pay him Brian Burns money. And it looks to be about the same. Now, I'm not your capologist. I'm not your, you know, financial, you know, guy that's going to walk you through that. But I go by guaranteed money. Um, so, you know, look, uh, at the end of the day... I, I think Josh Allen plays on the tag this year. I do. I, I just, I don't know. And I hope he gets it all. I hope he gets as much as he wants. But I'm not resetting the market with him. They kind of res well, they didn't reset it. But, man, they really did a, a, a thing. The wide receivers, you know, for, for Calvin, kind, kind of proven slash unproven. Uh, look, um, like I said on, on, on social media, I hope, uh, you know, Darnell Savage takes his fucking head off when he comes across the middle, if he ever will. Um, so, hey, we pivot. We move We move on. You know, I'm not going to say, I wish him, I do wish him well. I wish every NFL player well, but not when you're playing our Jags. Um, you know, that just uh, ain't going to happen. Um, but that's what it is. So you pivot. So who do you pivot to? Cortland Sutton, maybe? Marquise Hollywood Brown, can you trade for T? I think that's a tall order, but can you? And then the draft. And I know the draft hasn't been that great, but there should be plenty of targets. There should be other opportunities. I still want to see them do something on the offensive line. I like the Mitch Morse uh, signing. Nine-year vet, started every game. I think it was 126 games. I mean, he's, he's legit. He's legit. That math doesn't 
map out, but nonetheless, he, he is a legitimate center. You know, and, and again, back to the press conference, you know, don't believe everything that anybody says, because what did Trent say about Fortner? Oh, no, we believe in Fortner. Oh, no, he's our guy. Oh, no, we think, well, no, you don't, because you don't bring in Mitch Morse if you believe in Fortner. And don't give me this shit about developing. A guy started two years in a row. Can he get better? If he gets stronger, yeah, he can get better. No doubt about it. But at the end of the day, they brought in Mitch Morris. Don't give me competition. Don't give me any of that crap because I don't think it is. Okay? Uh, and Mitch Morris will be your starter. And, and Fortner will be your backup. And, hey, that's all right. Uh, I'm sure Fortner isn't going to like it. I'm sure Fortner's kind of upset about it. But it is what it is. Um, but Mitch Morris is definitely an upgrade and should bring some toughness and some physicality. Uh, I like what he said about Brandon Scherf. He said his college tape was insane. Look, I hope Brandon Scherf comes back healthy and kicks his shit out of everybody. I do. I hope that old line gets it. Look, I think center to right tackle, I'm very, very uh, uh, excited about. I think Anton, if he stays at right tackle, you know, look, they got more work to do, guys. I mean, what are you going to do with Cannon? Are you bringing him back at that number? Are you making him take a pay cut? Are you restructuring it? Or are you just flat out letting him go and saying, you know what? We drafted Anton to be our left tackle. You know, and he's good enough. He's got the feet. He's athletic enough, uh, tough enough, played with a shoulder injury, physical, gets after it. You know, can he play our left tackle? And then who's our right tackle? Now, a lot of you say, well, Walker Little. Well, you know, Walker, and, and it's funny. And see what people said. Walker Little was our best lineman. If he was our best lineman, he would be your starting left tackle. He would have been a year ago. You know, he would have. They would have let Cam go if they really, really felt that Walker Litter was their starting left tackle. Again, I say it all the time. These things don't happen without reason. There's, you know, the, the NFL doesn't do shit just for shits and giggles. They do it with reason. There's a reason why they brought in Mac Jones. Now, get low. He's not coming to replace Trevor. I never said that. But why would you target him to back up Trevor? That's totally ridiculous in my opinion. Guy's never really been a backup. He got beat out. And my friends up in New England, who I have plenty up there, they think he's a little bitch. I mean, they think he's not going to be a good backup. Maybe he's changed. Maybe he's going to change. I hope he does. Maybe they talk him into, hey, come down here for a year, you know, and maybe you resurrect your career. I don't know. And I don't care about this six-round pick because that means nothing. But to target another number one pick in the same draft class as your QB is just odd to me. That's all. doesn't mean he's better than Trevor. I know he's not. I know Trevor has all superior tool, tools to play quarterback than Mac Jones. But I think there's a reason behind it. Maybe, you know what, everyone's taking injury. Well, you know, if he gets injured, well, what if he keeps turning the ball over? What if he keeps fumbling? What if, just what if? I hope he does it. I hope he does it. It's a phenomenal year, but what if? That's their insurance policy. It's not better. It's a former number one pick that they scouted, that they must feel like his skill set, uh, skill set fits in their offensive system. What have you? You know, did they bring him in just for you? I don't think Matt Jones is coming here to be a career backup. Would you? I wouldn't. He's had the taste of, of being a starter. And, you know, look, that, that was a train wreck after a year run. Josh McDaniels had it going. And then when he left, it went south. Matt Patricia, defense coordinator, no, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to defend Matt Jones. All I know is, oh, he'll be a great backup. I'm like, he's, how do you know that? You don't know that. You have no idea what kind of backup Matt Jones is going to be. He better be a good one. Because the number one job of a backup QB is to support the starter, to make the starter better. To help the starter see things that maybe he doesn't see as well as you do looking from the side, right? Or looking on film or whatever the case may be. Uh, look, again, uh, nothing happens without reason. There were plenty of quarterbacks they could uh, get, go after. And don't start with your panties in a while. I'm not saying he's here to replace Trevor Lawrence. But I do think it's more than just the injury. What about the turnovers? Doug's made it very clear we cannot turn the ball over. Hopefully they get that. Uh, back uh, on track because they need to. All right, the rest of the class. Gabe Davis, great pick. I call. I didn't call. You know, everyone's going to call. Then I call. Look, I think Gabe would have been a, would be a great number two on this team if we had Calvin, which we don't enough. But if we have an X outside number one receiver, Gabe on the other side, number two, a bigger, just as fast, can get down the field. Zay Jones. He is what he is. Uh, he's a deep threat in terms of his stats. I like the big body. I think it gives Trevor a little more, you know, space to, to make completions. 
uh, especially in the red zone. So I love the Gabe Davis pick. Here's the question, though. You know, because everyone's like, well, look at his yards per catch downfield. It's 16.6, something like that. That's huge. That means you are down the field player. So why doesn't he play X? Can you keep Zay, if he's healthy, at Z? Right? Ingram's your Y. And by the way, you don't, you don't, they're called those number, those letters for a reason. And then you've got um, Kirk in the slot, which Kirk only thrives in the slot when those two outside guys have speed and you can flood everybody out and he can do his match. So can Gabe, D, can Gabe Davis be the X, the number one? Remains to be seen. Again, they got to be looking at Cortland Sutton. I don't know if any moves have been made in the last 24 hours. He was available last time I checked. T. Higgins, Marquise Brown, and then the draft. So hopefully we can figure that out. Or make Gabe your ex, your number one. Maybe he's ready to take over that role and be that guy. But I think that's a great pick. Ronald Darby, great pick. Great corner. Will physical you. Will get up in your face. Can play press. I like that pick a lot. Uh, and obviously they do too. And I think uh, Ryan Nielsen, our new defensive coordinator, had a say in that. So that's a good one. Darnell Savage, everyone's like, well, wait a minute. What's Wayne? Whoa. Obviously, he stood out in the playoffs. I don't think many people other than Green Bay, maybe fantasy players, really knew who Darnell Savage was. But he did stand out in the playoffs. He's a, a hard-hitting, uh, got great range, great speed, can make plays. Um, but it's funny because before that pick, everyone's like, oh, Cisco and Antonio Johnson. Well, you're not paying that guy that just to be the nickel. Now, maybe he'll jump down with the nickel. You got some flexibility. You got some creativity with Antonio Johnson. I think he's going to be a player. I'm not sure about him being the nickel, right? I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, Cisco can't play nickel, I don't think. I don't think he's quick twitch enough in that regard. And trust me, that's a specialized position. It is. Try, try guarding somebody in the open court in basketball and see if you can shut them down. And then try to do it against some little, you know, zoom, 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 you know, Mazda zoom, zoom type guy. And uh, you'll be left in the dust. But uh, we'll see how they shape those out in those positions. Uh, Devin Duvernay, I love it. And he replaces Agnew. I loved Agnew. I did. I loved him in the, uh, in the return game. I thought he could be a weapon. I think they, you know, Every time they lined him up, you kind of knew what they were doing. They, 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 you know, they kind of gave it away every single time. The one time I thought it was really impressive, he, when he ran the wheel route, right? You go out and then you go up down the sideline, and it was a great throw, great catch, and a, a great play. Uh, but every time he lined up at that wing position next to the, either the tight end or the tackle, to lose a tackle, you knew it was an end around. You know, why they now, that guy could run routes. Anyway, he's probably gone. Uh, Duvernay, younger, faster, maybe not faster, but fast, quick, can catch the rock, uh, can return, no doubt about that. So, uh, look, I think so far, you know, it's okay, it's good. You've, you've, you've definitely, uh, you know, filled some needs, especially at center uh, and wide receiver. I, again, I think Gabe Dave, Davis is, he's a, everyone uses the word dog, but he is. He's a physical receiver, big dude, can run, makes plays in the air. Um, you know, they say a scramble ability, which is <laughs> just get open, I guess, is the way to go. But uh, I like the pick, no doubt about it. We've got, of course, uh, more work to be done. We go after a guy like Eric Armstead. I mentioned the wide receivers. Can we get any of them? Um, I do want to see something up front on the defensive side uh, of the ball. I think that's going to be uh, very important. And, uh, you know, look... Um, Everybody wants to be a GM. I get it. I'm not in the room. You know, I'm not in the room. And you don't know the others. You don't know negotiations. We, we don't know the negotiations, right? You don't. You know, and, and look, I will say this. Calvin Rid Ridley's uh, agent, he, he's a genius, man. He, he did his job. Did his job. Got his guy the most money. Who would have thought that? I wouldn't have thought that. Even when I knew he was going to get a bag, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't think that much. That's, that's insane. Hey, if it works out for them, it's a great pick. I, I question whether it will. I question whether it will. Um, you know, I do. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. If I was from a football perspective, I would have stayed here in Jacksonville uh, if I was Ridley, but they move on. The show brought to my team, Tommy Mack. Just great businesses helping you out. 
get thrown in jail, call Chris Lucero, bail bond. Some were named the bail game. T-Dog, jump removal, and hauling contractors. Call them up because they're veteran owned and operated to get the job done right. Graffiti Burger Bar, right here in Jack's Beach. New ownership, new management, new menu, fantastic sports bar for you and your family. Solomon Ventures, get all your Homewood goods for less than wholesale prices. Indoors and outdoors. Carpet Man, not just LVP. Carpet Man's LVP. No, we've got all types of flooring. Highest quality at the lowest, lowest prices. Azar Sausage, had it the other night. I tell you, it's just phenomenal. Oh, the hot, the andouille, uh, two of my favorites. Get them at Winn-Dixie and at your local grocers, including at Solomon's, if you're in the area. Code Ninjas, Hey, man, coding is cool. Don't be a fool. Coding is cool. They've got their uh, camps coming up, so you families out there, your moms and dads, and gardens, take a look at Code Ninjas for a place to send your kid to camps out there in and suites right there at the beach, four blocks from the beach, boutique hotel with concierge service, Adaptive Jacks. They are my uh, partner in uh, production. They're my partner in marketing, not only for this show, but for others right there at Jack Speech. You do a great job. Michael Nick is State Farm. Been my State Farm agent. Mike, good job. You're the man for over 20 years. He's the one I go to. Make sure you check him out as well. Hey, listen, I tag each and every one of them on Facebook. Just hit the tag. Go to their page. If you need their service, dial them up. Boom. It's going to be a great thing. I'm very proud to have all of them on board. All right, let's take a quick look around. Just the AFC South, because uh, interesting, they got better. I don't know if Indy got better. Indy basically, other than Flacco, maybe for a year, which is, I don't know if it's official yet, they re-signed their guys. And look, Zaire Franklin, hell of a linebacker. I, he is a hell of a linebacker. I love that guy. Um, Michael Pittman Jr., of course, the wide receiver. They bring him back. Kenny Moore, the DB, Grover Stewart, who missed time due to uh, steroid suspension, and uh, Tyquan Lewis. So they're bringing their guys back. I'm not expecting that much out of Indy. Uh, we'll see what AR can do up there in his second year after coming off that injury in his rookie season. Texans definitely got stronger, man. Danielle Hunter, Danico Autry, Aziz Al Shire, who was another great linebacker. I think he was fifth in the league. In tackles, he goes from the Titans to the Texans, and then Joe Mixon, the running back. They got better. They got better. I tell you, they're going to be the team to beat going in, and that's okay. Maybe we're better as you know the the one hunting and not being hunted, and we'll see if they can handle now that the uh, the target is on their back. A lot to be said about that. When you have a great year with a rookie QB, rookie head coach, let's see how year two goes. They should be primed and ready. They definitely added. Uh, to that defense, and I, man, I got Will Anderson Jr., you got Daniel Hunter, Danico Autry, these guys can all get to the QB, can all disrupt, we better do more on offense, look, I don't, I, uh, our offensive line didn't automatically just get better, our guards didn't get better, our tackles didn't get better, our center position got better, you know, and by the way, the calls aren't that difficult, they're not. All right. Quit acting like these guys are some kind of Nassau, you know, geniuses that they got to call out who the mic is. It's not that hard for crying out loud. They got to be physical. They got to be able to, to help each other out. But, you know, this whole, oh, there's so much communication. You can't figure it out. Yes, you can. It's not that. I listen. I called all the plays. It was no big deal. You figure it out. You study. You know what the hell you're doing. Uh, of course, the Titans, they had Ridley. Tony Pollard could take it to the house. Lloyd Cushenberry, a center upgrade. Uh, Kenneth Murray Jr., the linebacker from San Diego, played in Oklahoma. I liked him going out of college. He's had an okay year. He's not, a, you know, had his best year last year, they say. So we'll see what happens with that. And then Chidobe Awuzie, the quarterback from Cincinnati. So Titans got better. Again, you know, the Ridley thing, you know, think about it more and more. Look, good for them, I guess. Will Levis can throw it down the field. I just don't know how accurate he is. You know, they did upgrade the offensive line. Uh, Cushenberry's a nice signing. But I don't think Cushenberry better than Morse. Probably a, a wash there. Morse with a lot more um, experience. You know, has done it a very, very long time. Um, you know, so, uh, but they, they got better. And I think we got better. I do. Would I have liked Ridley? Yeah, no doubt. But now I want somebody else. So pivot. Hey, we know in business you got to pivot all the time, man. Shit don't work out, deal don't work out, whatever doesn't work out, you pivot. Sit that foot right. 
you go to something else. You go to the next thing that's on your list. So uh, we're going to have to do that at wide receiver. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. Look, I could sit here and say uh, uh, with Ridley, I thought the upside was very good for this year in our system. Now, I, I don't. I even said it before with him. Like it depends where he goes. Like, what if you don't have the quarterback to get him the ball? I know some people think Will Levis is going to be you know really good. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. He's shown flashes, you know. But again, they'll get him on tape. They'll figure him out. I think for the 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 uh, the Titans offense, D Hop on the other side, and then and then Ridley. Yeah, that should be good firepower. But look, that doesn't mean uh, much to me uh, because I think with the right player at X, that's what we need, you know. And maybe again, maybe it's Gabe Davis and you keep Zay Jones. All of a sudden, Zay's not as high of a commodity, but if he doesn't get injured, you know, it's different. And and his injuries, look, he had the knee and the ankle, I believe, and uh, you know, he um, he had to fight through all that. And that's not easy. You could tell that big brace he had that, that hurt him. He couldn't run like he's normally used to. So can he come back healthy? I'm still addressing it in the draft at some point. You know, I still want to beef up my old line and D-line. Uh, you're not done there. Please say you're not done there. Uh, and it's okay if they're rookies and they're backups or whatever, but you can upgrade your, your backups. I mean, no disrespect to the backups, but are they that great anyway? Blake Hans, no disrespect. I, I, Hey, congrats, he got a new deal, but can he jump in there and really hold down the fort for multiple games? I don't know. He was okay when he got in there. Um, but, you know, I think you got to upgrade that. And defensive tackle, we need a new defensive tackle. Sheldon Rankins, most of them are accounted for. Oh, man, the Raiders got a good one in, in uh, Wilkins. They did, and I know Seattle re-upped with their guy, so he's staying uh, Seattle will be interesting. It looks like Rayshon Jenkins made it over to Seattle. Good for you, Rayshon. Congrats and best of luck. I, I didn't want to see it go. Uh, but I do like our, our our trio of safeties right now. I do. And uh, they're a little bit younger and uh, a little bit maybe faster. And let's see if they can be even better on the playing field. Um, we'll see about that. But at the end of the day, uh, I know everyone thinks they can be a GM and be better than what Balky's doing. I don't know. I want to see the end. You know. You know. People. It's so funny. It's like a. It's you know what it's like. And we just we're, we're in the ninth season of Suits and and Suits to me the the TV series. It's I keep telling about it. It's up down. It's up down. Oh, we save the world. Oh, it's crashing. Oh, we save the world. Oh, it's crashing. I mean that's what this you know kind of feels like when people look at Trent. Oh, he's genius. Oh, he sucks. Oh, he's a genius. Oh, he sucks. <laughs> I just fall up and down, back and forth. Look, your fans, you're allowed to say what you want. You're allowed to do what you want. Again, I'm going to wait to see how they finish. I think it's okay so far. I get your frustration out there. I wanted Ridley. I did. You have Josh Allen. He's not going anywhere. So even if he plays on the tag, which I kind of have a feeling he might, uh, which is okay. Hey, look, he's, you know, it, it takes two to tangle. I'm not just saying, what do you want? I'm not. And if they did, he, they would already been signed. So that value is, you know, they're just going to have to come down to that, figure it out. And the worst case scenario is he's here for a tag, another tag. But you've got work to do because you got to get something done with him because you're not going to tag him in another year, I wouldn't think. you still got to work on Trevor, they say. I, I'd wait another year on Trevor, but you get whatever. You know, it's funny. You guys... <laughs> You know what? You don't critique that kid at all. You think he's like the next coming. I know they said he is, and hopefully he is, but he hasn't shown that yet. He's shown glimpses of it, and I want him to hone it all in and be a great quarterback. And hopefully he can do that. They added Gabe Davis. Hopefully they add some more. And, uh, you know, we get some better play out of our second-year players from a year ago, including Brent Strange, who, in my opinion, could be another use check that they use out in San Fran. I think he's got the skill set for that. All right, I got to go. I got to run to the horse's mouth. Full day of taping. Uh, looking forward to that. Hey, listen, man, if you haven't seen it, it airs on ABC 25 each and every Sunday at noon. So it's on NBC, but early Saturday mornings at 5, 5.30 if you want to record it. Or if you're up that early, it's a show that everybody has a chance to sit at my bar and tell their story. And guess what? 
Everyone has a story. And it doesn't cost you anything to sit there. You get a beer, you get a shot of whiskey, you get some water, you get a Pepsi, whatever you want. It's all right there for you. And you get a chance to tell your story, tell who you are, what you're doing in the market and beyond. And it's really a unique show. And I love doing it. We do it every Thursday from a studio uh, in San Marco. I'll be doing it again today. And uh, I'm off tomorrow for Jaguars today. Uh, no passes to get me out there at TPC, and I'm not fighting all that traffic. So I am calling in, I believe, at the 10, 1040 block. I'm sure we'll talk more free agency and see uh, what else the Jags have done uh, to add to talent to this team. Hopefully they're not done. I don't think they're done in free agency. I'd like to see some defensive line help and maybe, uh, and I'm okay with the draft, bringing in a tackle. But I think we're going to need another offensive tackle. I don't, I'm not running it back with Cam, Walker, and Anton. That wasn't good enough. It just wasn't good enough. And uh, I'll keep Anton, and I'll keep Walker, and unless Cam takes a cut, I'm probably not bringing him back. And i got to make sure he's healthy for at least 15 games. And I'm still adding to that, that, that group and make it even stronger, whether it's through the draft or whatnot. All right, that'll do it for me. Thanks to Team Tommy Mac. Thanks to all of you checking it out today, man. I really appreciate all the support. I see my old teammate Lachey. Uh, how you doing there, my man? You were a badass player. You're doing great. I see on Facebook. That's one great thing about Facebook. Minus all the boasting and, you know, wow, look at me kind of crap, or the bitching and moaning. It's saying you get to see your friends doing so great in life, and Lachey Mason, Mastin is doing that. Great, great football player and a great, great dude. And, uh, Appreciate you checking it out. Appreciate everybody checking out. Y'all have a great day today. And uh, we'll be posting this on 1010XL and on YouTube and all that good stuff all throughout social media. So until next time, stay safe out there and be cool. And we'll see you next time right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. Peace.